Welcome to the Edge You Magic New Educator Podcast, the go to show for supporting new educators navigating the exciting journey from campus to the classroom. Join your host, Dr. Sam Fesich, for a blend of inspiration, advice, and practical strategies, one cup of coffee at a time. This is Brittany Blackwell, host of the Resilient Teacher Podcast, a proud member of the Education Podcast Network, along with this podcast. Each show on the network is independently owned, and the views expressed may not represent those of other podcasts. For the best education podcast, visit edupodcastnetwork.com. Hello, Edu Magicians, and welcome back to another episode of the Edu Magic Podcast. My name is Dr. Sam Fessage, and today I have with me Dr. Clinton Smith. He's going to be sharing all about social emotional learning and why it's important for school leaders so they can support their faculty and their staff. Dr. Smith, welcome to the show. Thank, thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to have you here. So let's start off with sharing a little bit about your teaching journey and what brought you into education. Sure. I'm a 32 year educator. I started out as a social science, social studies education major. I really didn't want to be a coach. You know, a lot of times they think, oh, coaches want to teach social studies, you know, but I didn't really want to be a coach. So my first job was in special education. All right. I I really couldn't find, like I said, I couldn't find a job in social studies for secondary. So I wound up in special education, wound up loving it. Got my master's and doctorate in special education. So I spent 10 years, three years at a high school in Arkansas and then 10 years in a middle school in Memphis suburbs. Past 12 years, I've been at uh, U- University of Tennessee at Martin preparing teachers. Awesome. Well, what kind of coursework do you lead at the university? I mainly do the special education courses. I have a behavior management and strategies, interventions course, classroom management organization course, pretty much any special education course I, I teach. Differentiation is another course I teach. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Excellent. And how did your passion for social emotional learning start to start to arise? Did it happen whenever you were in the K-12 classroom? Did it happen when you're serving future educators? You know, it, it, it happened pretty much during COVID, believe it or not. We were, okay. I'm a part of a, a group with the National Education Association. It's the National Education Association's IDEA Special Education Contract. It's a group of special educators from across the nation who get together and provide resources for educators. And one of the topics we talked about was social emotional learning. What what are we going to do to help students during this time? Because kids are at home, they're not interacting with others, except through maybe video games or you know Zoom meetings, things like that. And so that was a topic that came up. NEA created a course, a blended learning course on social emotional learning on the five competencies, which I'm sure we'll get into later. Oh yeah. And I wrote a, a course on self management. And I sort of was like, I really, I need to get more into this. And as I started looking more into it and been doing some presentations on it and things like that. But that's sort of where it started. Wonderful. Thanks for that background. That really helps to serve our, our listeners today. For the course, is the course still available for people to take? It is. It is. You have to be a member of an EA, of course, mm-hmm. to access it. But they have a, a learning platform that you can access as an EA member. Beautiful. All right. Excellent. So let's start our conversation off with defining some of the terms we're going to use today. And one of the big ones we're going to use is social emotional learning. Can you define that for our listeners? Yeah. Well, the major place to go for anything SEL is a CASEL or CASEL, however you want to say it. It's a collaborative for academic, social, and emotional learning. That's CASEL.org. Easy Mm -hmm. site to find lots of resources. But they define as a process to which all young people and adults acquire and apply knowledge skills, attitudes, to develop healthy identities, to learn how to manage their emotions and to achieve personal and collective goals, to feel and show empathy for others, and to establish and maintain supportive relationships, but also make responsible, caring decisions. Nice. And what does, so that definition has a lot of meat to it. What does that look like in practice? Let's go back maybe a little bit and talk about the five competencies of SEL. There are five sure. competencies that sort of is like a framework. Okay. And that can be, this framework can be integrated into all areas of school life, whether you're a student or whether you're an educator, whether you're a school leader, it can be integrated all over the place, basically. Mm-hmm. The first one is self-awareness. The first competency is self-awareness. 
basically knowing yourself, recognizing your strengths, your weaknesses, your, your limitations. How do you approach problems? You know, is it from a fixed mindset or a growth mindset? Mm-hmm. And we really want to push that growth mindset. You know, a lot of educators know, you know what? Wow, I'm really overwhelmed here. I need some self-management skills, stress relieving mm-hmm. skills. I need something to, you know, to help me here. But th- just knowing that you're aware of that for self-awareness. Mm-hmm. And second one, self-management. My favorite one. You know, I, wrote <laughs> I was going to say that one's uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but that, that one is, you know, being able to manage your emotions, self-regulation falls under that one. You know, your, your emotions, your thoughts, your behaviors in different situations. You know, and I'm going to get off a little, little bit off track here, but, you know, people say those soft skills that we need. Mm-hmm. I think all those soft skills come through SEL. But back to self-management, you know, setting those personal collective goals, how to manage stress, how to be motivated, and how to reach those goals. Mm-hmm. Social awareness, basically trying to understand the perspective of others, knowing how to show empathy and compassion to others, and being culturally competent. You know, to understand cultural differences and how to communicate and interact with others. Responsible decision making is the fourth one. And basically building, uh, I'm sorry, making constructive choices about your personal behavior, but your social interactions as well. And responsible, I'm sorry, building relationships, establishing and maintaining healthy relationships and, and, ma- and navigating through life with that. Mm-hmm. But you meet different people and work with different people. How do you, how do you interact with others? Mm-hmm. So those are sort of the five competencies of SEL. And so, in those five competencies, you shared some ideas of what this would look like in practice, building those relationships, maintaining those relationships. And I really like how you, you're like, we're getting off track here, but I like how you shared, you know, these soft skills that we talk about, it's all embedded within social emotional, or you can see the soft skills embedded throughout those five pillars. And exactly. to be honest, those soft skills, they're more like survival and thrive, thriving skills. And, and exactly. Off, yeah. Right. 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 So, and you, you mentioned in, in the definition in some of your examples for each of the five pillars, social emotional learning can be used across the board in schools. So with students, with, with educators, with school leaders. So what does that look like? If you want to pull out one of those pillars, maybe self-management is it's your fave. What does that look like in those different roles in schools and education? Sure. I'm going to go to probably something that if a lot of your listeners are educators, mm-hmm. we're all stressed. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. We're all stressed. So we can practice SEL skills of self-awareness and self-management to identify our emotions, to understand why we're doing it, where the stress is coming from, mm-hmm. how this impacts us, and then how are we going to manage that stress? What's our plan? Right? What, what's, what goals can we set to deal with our stress? Mm-hmm. I think that's a big one. Another one, social awareness, you know, working with parents, working with students, working with the community, working with, working with other school leaders and other teachers, what, understanding the perspectives of others and showing empathy and compassion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm in the special ed world. And so we, that, that's who we are. We're, you know, yeah. empathy and compassion. When we think of students with disabilities, because we, we want them to be as independent as possible. Right. Yeah, we have to understand from their perspective and know what their limitations are, but also what their strengths are. Yes. And we build on those strengths to help them overcome those limitations. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, we do. Because when they leave our schools, whatever age, here in PA, they can graduate at the age of 21. The, the goal of independence is, is huge. You want them to be independent as much as they can. As much as it can be. Absolutely. All right. So, well, let's refocus back to our school leaders for who are listening in today. How can school leaders use this, these five pillars of the SEL framework to support their faculty and coworkers? We had mentioned earlier, there's a lot of stress in education. We know that the retention rate is really low with education. People are resigning or burning out. How can SEL help support that? Sure. First off, whether we're a school leader, a teacher leader, whatever role we are, model, 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 model. Mm-hmm. We have to model these SEL skills for our students. If we don't yeah. practice them, we can't teach them to our students. Yeah. I think that's that's number one. You know, there's a lot of great SEL curriculum out there, but it really doesn't have to be curriculum. I'm sorry, curriculum writers, but you know, it doesn't <laughs> have to be a curriculum. It just needs to be integrated through everything that we do. 
And then, like I said, SEO is a framework. So, but there are some great things out there to get a lot of, a lot of resources out there to help folks do that. School leaders can create opportunities for SEO learning through, uh, and practice, of course, through professional development sessions, faculty mm -hmm. meetings. Focus on successes. Where are successes? Mm -hmm. What's going on? What's, what's going on is great. And well, where are you struggling? Let's talk about that. Identify those limitations and maybe see what's going on. And let's set some goals to overcome those. Right. Establishing, you know, clear norms and expectations for constructive and respectful communication and behavior. Yeah. You know, both in the classroom and at the school. Sometimes school school folks don't get along sometimes. So we need to establish mm -hmm. those norms. And that way you can address any issues that may arise pretty promptly. You know, encourage faculty to be active participants in relationship building routines. Build those relationships with your students, with each other. You know, that, that's really important. And then that way you can engage each other as a resource when you're trying to problem solve. Mm -hmm. you know, so those are just a few ways. But again, I go back to model, 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 model. We, we've got to be able to, to practice what we preach with SEO. Absolutely, we do. What are some small ways we can get started with implementing SEO to start modeling that for our students and for our faculty? I think we can just incorporate SEO practices in our daily routines. You know, we teach, we teach daily routines and transitions to our kids every day, right? Right. And we incorporate SEL into that. You know, I think that's one thing. And we model those skills, you know, it, that can really help the student outcomes. Mm -hmm. We start seeing our students practice those skills. And we see that, you know, increased academic achievement, fewer behavioral problems, things like that. Because, you know, when, when kids have a relationship with the teacher, I think that that really helps it with does. those areas. Oh, it truly does. Yeah, and they can incorporate SE onto their lessons. You know, you can, you can be teaching... I'm, so, I'm a social studies guy, right? Social studies, you can talk about an important figure in the past. What could this person have done to solve this problem? What SEL skills could he have used? You know, maybe he could have built relationships or made a responsible decision here. What was the result of that? You know, and you could sort of talk about incorporate SEL into those, into those lessons. I like that idea of incorporating it into our lessons, incorporating it into our, our everyday with students and with faculty. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Smith. What about some resources for our listeners who want to learn more about SEL? Where can they, where can they turn to? We'd mentioned sure. the Castle site. Right. That, that's my primary site. That's my primary <laughs> site where I get everything. There's lots of research there. There's lots of strategies. Of course, Google is your friend. Oh, right? yeah. There are lots and lots and lots of blogs and articles from different websites on SEL learning. I went through, I was preparing for this. I was just checking out some of those sites and all of them were having the same ideas. And, you know, so things I was going to say, oh, yeah, I was going to say that. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about it. <laughs> so I found some cool things there, but some really great blogs and, and articles out there on SEL. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll make sure we drop the castle link in our show notes for today. And Dr. Smith, I'm going to thank you so much for your time today sharing about SEL, those five pillars, and how we can implement it in our everyday practice. Thank you. Oh, that's great. Thank you for having me. It's, it's awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the EduMagic New Educator Podcast. If you found it helpful, please leave a rating and review or share it with a friend. Always remember, you have the EduMagic in you.